Hey guys, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel. And you know, Guitar Center, people like to rag on Guitar Center. Guitar Center ends up being the butt of a lot of jokes a lot of the time. And I think in some ways that's really unfair. Uh, as you may know, I'm a big fan of the Guitar Center used inventory. You can always find great deals on there. And uh, of course, I'm also a big fan of the dumpster specifically the one behind the Sherman Oaks Guitar Center. So I want to start off by saying that I don't think Guitar Center deserves all of the hate that they get so often. That being said, the new CEO of Guitar Center recently made some comments that I'm a little concerned about, and quite honestly, I'm kind of scratching my head over this. I think one of the worst things that a company can do is to completely misunderstand their customer base and what you know, who their customer base is and what the customer base wants. And I think that that might be what is going on with Guitar Center. So there's a great article that I've got up here on guitar.com, and I'm going to read through this, and this has some great dialogue with the new CEO, and I think it'll be pretty obvious what I'm concerned about, but we'll go ahead and get into it. But now, real quick, guys, two things. One, I'm going to have a link to the original article down in the description below if you want to read through the whole thing yourself. And also, if you enjoy videos like this, staying up on the latest news in the guitar universe and you've not already subscribed for some bizarre reason, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this here. And this is, like I said, on guitar.com. Here's the headline, The World Needs Guitar Center, New Guitar Center CEO, on how the retail giant needs to evolve and execute better to survive. Okay, here's how it, it starts off. And this is like a pretty much brand new article. So, Newly appointed Guitar Center CEO Gabe Dalporto has outlined how the company needs to evolve and execute better to remain competitive. Speaking in the May issue of Music Inc. magazine, which he is on the cover of, by the way, uh, Dalporto, who was named GC CEO last October, believes the company is one that really needs to exist in many markets. He says here, if you want to experience musical instruments and start off or accelerate your journey as a musician, the world needs Guitar Center. I don't see how those two pieces of the sentence are related, but okay, you know, let's just move on here. Our customers need us and our vendors need us, he says, but in order to earn the right to be here, we need to evolve and execute better. For Del Porto, that begins with expanding GC's premium offerings and rethinking the experience of its physical stores, a strategy driven by a desire to shift the company's focus back to their core customer, the quote, serious musician, i.e. the gigging guitarist or the passionate player where music is a big piece of their identity. Now, right there, I think, is the first mistake here. The company it says the company's focus back to their core customer, the serious musician or the gigging artist. I do not think that is uh, Guitar Center's core customer base. In fact, far from it. But let's go on and, and read on here. Then I'll talk a little bit more about this. He goes on to say here, we have some premium product, but we don't have enough. Dal Porto explains a byproduct of the company pivot to the entry level market over the years. And it's very hard to experience our premium product because we have our best guitars locked on the top row where you can't easily get to them. So if I'm a serious musician and I walk into a guitar center, it doesn't feel like the right place for me anymore. I want customers to walk into a store and have the same experience I had when I was younger and just be hit in the face with, wow, this is amazing, this is a playground, this is where I belong, he adds. And that means having a much more premium assortment that's more easily accessible where I can get in and grab a guitar and plug it in and try all these pedals and effects and just geek out and have a great time. Beyond its products, Del Porto also highlights the need to invest in Guitar Center's sales team and their consultative skills so they can help customers really experience the magic of some of these instruments. If you go into a guitar store and you set out a $3,000 Martin Acoustic, nobody buys it out of necessity, he says. They don't buy it until someone actually spends time with them and says, you know, this wood is extremely rare and it gives this incredible sound and you can't find anywhere else. We need to be consultative and relationship driven. If I help you find the instrument of your dreams and I give you a great experience and I check in on you and make sure everything is good, 
you're going to come back and you're not just going to come back to Guitar Center, you're going to come back to me, the sales associate at your local Guitar Center. He says it isn't about selling that tuner today, it's about that relationship over time. Now the article wraps up here, it says, and given Dal Porto's background in digital business, it's no surprise the executive also cites a push into the digital space as one of GC's key focuses heading into the future. We were kind of in the dark ages of digital as a company, he says. There was a point in like 2008 where we were the dominant player and then we lost our focus and ceded all that market share to our competition. That has been a high growth area that we've not had the right strategies to win in. Our competition has more engaging content that makes it easier to find the right product and buy the right product. Okay, and that is the end of the article. And again, if you want to read that whole thing yourself, there's a, a link in the video description below. But there are several things here that jump out to me as being major red flags. And I want to stress, guys, like I said in the beginning, I don't dislike Guitar Center generally. And I, I have no beef with Gabe here. Statistically speaking, he's probably a perfectly nice guy. And there are many things he says in this article that I agree with and that I think would be legitimate improvements to the Guitar Center experience, like, uh, like the consultative skills that he's talking about. I don't want to go into Guitar Center and argue with the salesperson about what gauge of strings I would like to buy. I don't want to get into a debate with my local GC associate about whether or not seven string guitar strings have to have the number seven in the gauge. Not that that's happened or anything. And this whole thing he's talking about how he wants people today to have the same great experience that he did when he was younger. That's very admirable. But I think all of this really comes down to two big problems. The first one is that the market is really not serious gigging musicians. The market for Guitar Center and for any large uh, retail chain that, says music, that sells musical instruments, the market is for people who are interested in becoming a serious musician. This is kind of a misconception that I think shows up all the time and it shows up a lot on like uh, YouTube channels as an example. The pool of people that are thinking about playing guitar or maybe they're going to buy their first guitar that pool of people is massive. And those are the potential customers who are going to buy a guitar that's two or three or four hundred dollars, something like that. The number of people who are serious gig musicians who are gonna pay $2,500 for a nice PRS, that pool of people is tiny, 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 smaller than it used to be, and it's getting smaller every day. There's something that, that kind of gets repeated a lot, and it is absolutely true, but it is much easier to sell 10 $100 guitars than to sell one $1,000 guitar. The CEO is talking about in this article about how the company pivoted from more serious musicians to the more entry-level market. I think that was actually a really good idea. If the company is not doing well now, it's not because of that pivot. It's probably because the economy sucks and everybody's broke and buying guitars is just not a huge priority. The other problem, it's not even really a problem, it's just contributing to the situation, is that there are an incredible number of really high value but budget-friendly guitars that are out on the market now. So you just don't have to pay that much money anymore to get a great guitar that a serious musician can use. You don't have to pay more than a thousand dollars, that's for sure. Gigging musicians are making less money than they ever have. I mean, musicians in general are making less money than they ever have. And that means they have less money to spend on their equipment. And it's much harder to justify to yourself or to your wife that you need to spend a lot of money on a guitar. So let's say in a perfect world that Gabe was able to execute all of the awesome ideas that he's talking about. So the, the sales associates are gonna be more knowledgeable and better at giving advice uh, you know, are you going to pay them more? Are you going to hire other people who are more experienced? I don't know exactly how you're going to achieve that uh, without massively increasing the, uh, the expenses. But hey, let's just say somehow, uh, you know, they're able to do that, right? Well, the problem is, even if you made that perfect, wonderful experience that was targeting the serious gigging musicians, there are simply not enough of them 
to support the business. They're not gonna, there's not enough of them and they're not gonna spend the amount of money that you would need them to to support the company and all of these improvements that you wanna make. The other thing here is these improvements are gonna, I mean, this is gonna be an uphill battle. I mean, this is gonna be really difficult. In my experience, not that I'm a serious musician, but I've met some, and when I talk to them, the, the attitude towards Guitar Center is that if they have to go into Guitar Center because they like ran out of strings unexpectedly or something like that, and they have to go buy something that they can't order online, uh, they often just kind of avoid talking to the sales people because it's just, it's just thought of as like a hassle. Someone who's a serious musician going into Guitar Center, they don't, they don't need the consultative skills. In fact, they don't even really want them. They probably are going there and they already know what it is that they want to buy and why. And when Gabe here is talking about how he wants to give people the great experience that he had, I mean, I hate to say it, but times have just changed. Uh, the market has changed. The way people value playing music and being a musician, all that stuff has changed a lot in the past 10, 15, 20 years, you know, basically since the early 2000s. The music industry is completely different, and the concept of a professional serious musician that doesn't mean what it used to mean. So all that being said, uh, there are some other things that he mentioned in here that I think are really good ideas. I mean, they're talking about doing more stuff in the digital space, you know. Uh, Guitar Center has done that stuff in the past, but they could be doing, uh, could be doing a lot more. So imagine if Guitar Center was a little bit more like Anderton's or something, right? I think that's a good example, where you go to the Guitar Center YouTube channel or website or whatever, to stay up on the latest stuff that's coming out in the market. That would be really cool and it would be great for Guitar Center, but the way it is right now, people find out about stuff from other sources and then they go to Guitar Center and they're like, hey, do you have this thing that I, I saw Phil McKnight talking about or I saw it on Music as When? do you have that? So guys, those are my thoughts on this, this article with the new uh, CEO of Guitar Center. And if, uh, you know, if Guitar Center takes any of my advice, then uh, hopefully there'll be a check in the mail for me, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. But guys, let me know what you think of all this stuff I'm talking about down in the comments section below. Let's continue the conversation down there. I really wanna know what you guys think about it. And you know, maybe there's things that I'm not considering that you are considering. Let me know, tell me down in the comments section below. Okay guys, again, I'm gonna have a link to the original article in the video description below, plus links down there for my social media and my new instructional video, all that stuff. Guys, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you soon.